So for many of you prospective students who may want to go to RPI for four years of your life, I'm here to kind of tell you more about the school as well as introduce you to some of the back and behind the scenes and kind of the stuff they don't really tell you about Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. So first off, my name is Simon and I am currently a computer systems engineer at RPI. I have a lot of experience working with the different classes that I have worked with. So the first topic I want to talk about is education. So what is the education and how is the kind of the academics, academic rigor and what are things like? So academically, this is a very uh, challenging school. You're going to be able to learn different things and really push yourself into trying to learn by yourself. A lot of it isn't you going to class and just picking up the topic right away. You're going to have to do some research on it yourself a lot of the times and really find out how to do this certain problem or really it really pushes you to use Google and as an external source and besides just going to class. Uh, for me personally, I don't think that the lecture halls are for me, but it's all entirely up to you. I don't really go to class that much. I typically just review the lecture notes, do the homeworks, study for the test. You should always just get the back exams, which would make everything a lot more easier. And that's how I was able to go through my first semester. And that should apply to you, same to you. If you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to sacrifice some time goofing off, then in terms of academically, you're going to be fine. It's just that it's really, really high um, in priority. That should be your number one priority anyways as a student. And if that is something that you're not into or not really interested in, then RPI isn't really for you. Next off, I want to talk about the people here, which I believe is one of the biggest parts of why I enjoy RPI. Uh, so you're gonna find new friends on the first day of school. They're gonna have some, uh, it's called an NRB event, where you, you, and you pick certain topics or certain events that you're interested in, and you're able to more so bond with the people that you meet. And what I really recommend for you to do is really reach out to people when you're, in your first days. You're gonna be able to meet a lot, so many, so many people. And that transition from let's say high school to college, that's completely different. That's it's not it's no way near the same. So what I recommend you do is really just go out with these NRB events because a lot of the friends I met at these events are the friends I still hang out with today. And that goes to show how the first kind of days you are in RPI, you're able to make these a lot of friendships and go to these events. And, and for just more so, if you have people that you know and you trust, they would be more than willing to help you out if you need help academically, uh, mentally, and without the support system I have at RPI, I don't know where I would be, and I don't know if I would be where I am in my career if not if not for these people. Now I want to talk about the food at RPI. So we have this around three dining halls on campus, right? So number one being Commons, number two being Sage Dining Hall, and number three being Bar H. And I rank them in order based on my personal preference, but a lot of people would agree that Commons is the best hall, dining hall to eat at. So they, they do offer some uh, vegetarian options, although it isn't really too much, 
they are like salad bars. They are like pe- stuff for people who have allergies. It's called simple servings, and some people who have like dietary restrictions, they they account for that too. So, basically, what it is is that you have uh, unlimited meal swipes as a freshman. So you have to, they force you to pay for a meal plan, which is kind of ridiculous, but it is what it is, right? Like, you can't really do nothing about that. And it's around, I don't know, 7000 a year around there. But the upside is that it is all you can eat. You can just go back for seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. There's no problem. And it's around... I did the math, it's around like ten dollars a meal or eleven dollars, twelve dollars a meal. And but for all you can eat, like I'm not really complaining too much. And depending on where you live, the dining hall should be really close to you and you shouldn't have a problem getting to the food. The food a lot of people have their complaints. Like they say the chicken's dry, some of the stuff isn't really crazy, but if you go in the mornings, let me tell you, they have these, there's this lady called Rebecca, and she's like the sweetest lady, she always makes omelets, you can put anything in your omelet, there's like four types of meat, you have chicken, you have bacon, you have, I don't know, sausages, right, and you can put vegetables inside your omelet, and she makes it for you live, like you're watching her make it, and then she, and then you can add different types of cheeses to it, it's mozzarella, I recommend shredded cheese, or maybe some feta cheese. I don't know. I don't think they have mozzarella. In there. I lied. So you could do that. And for lunch, they do have a pasta section. If you're really picky, you can have you can add your own meats and vegetables again. And they also make it live for you. So a lot of the people do complain about the dining halls, but honestly, I think that it it have their faults. But for the most part, it's pretty pretty diverse you have different types of food and different types of things that you can enjoy as long as you wake up early for the pot uh, the omelet it does close at like nine o'clock nine ten o'clock or nine thirty ish so as long as you wake up early it shouldn't be a problem right and let me tell you about sage sage is for me personally i don't really like going there it's just not for me i I saw this one person have, um, he just used his hands and just put the salad into the salad bar from the prepackaged containers. If he didn't wash, I didn't see him wash his hands, nothing. Like, he just fucking took that and put that in into the salad bar. And I was just like, bro, what are you doing? Um, but the only good part about Sage is that they got my rat friends over there at Sage. But... But the only good things they have is the soft serve machine. They have a soft serve ice cream machine. So if you're a freshman, you have unlimited swipes. You can make your own ice cream every single time. And that is the best thing ever. If it's, well, I consider it free because my parents pay for the dining hall plan. But I don't know. I Maybe it's not, it's not free. Okay. But they are also kind of uh, this... Uh, we have this Rensselaer Union where everyone can go to study or to eat or to like socialize. So there are options that you can pay with uh, flex dollars. So I think your freshmen are allowed $150 in flex. So flex is just another form of currency which you can use to buy like Panera Bread. We have Panera Bread. We have like a sushi place. We have um, Halal Shack. For, for those who are interested in that, they have a burger joint. And they used to have a pizza joint, but they took it out for some reason and replaced it with, like, some Chinese food, like ramen and, like, rice dishes, which is... I'm not really complaining about, but... Oh, we also have a Ben & Jerry's. So, with those flex dollars, you can buy certain types of... Different types of food that aren't on the dining hall. But why would you not go to the... All you can eat if you're forced on the unlimited meal plan to go to the commons or something you know what i'm saying so, so that is food covered it's i would rate it a seven out of ten in terms of quality but 
you're able to have different options if you really want that too. The only good part is that it is, as I said before, all you can eat. And they do have a variety of different options for you. So if you want to party, you want to go out there, you want to really just explore, have this college experience where you go out onto campus and find all these new things. Well, let me tell you, you might not have that. So what there is to on campus is on the weekends is nothing too crazy. Let's say, cause we have this, you can just go to like a Walmart or like go downtown. If you don't have a car that then you wouldn't really go anywhere besides just hang out with your friends, play basketball, I don't know, watch a movie in one of the lecture halls. But for the most part, there isn't too much to do if you don't have a car. But if you do have a car, we are in the capital of the motherfucking state, New York State, are we? We're in Albany. Well, close to Albany. We're in Troy, but it's I, I basically just say it's close to Albany. You can travel there. And by, it's like 20 minutes by car. You can go out to eat. And there's different like, things to do. There's board games. There's, you can do, like I don't know, laser tag ice skating there's so much to do in albany but just not in Troy. it's just that if you don't have a car or you don't want to pay for an uber you're basically stuck on campus i mean you could go take the bus to walmart if you want and go to the grocery run or you could just chill with your friends but that's the mainly what you should do there's nothing really too crazy the party life if you do know the right people there are kind of parties for you and but it's not, they're not hosting parties every week. It's like mostly like, let's say once in a while. You, I mean, that just allows you to focus more on academics, focus more on yourself, developing your character and talking to other people instead of going, if you, unless you want, really, really want to go to these parties, then this isn't really the place for you. You could just join a frat or anything. I don't know. We have different types of frats on campus and it just the party life isn't too crazy, but there are stuff if you do want to have parties. There are parties. It's just that it's not a really big thing at our school. I mean, this is so what they in say. In terms of tuition and cost, right? Uh, apparently, a lot of people here don't really pay full cost for their tuition. Like, if you're paying 60, 70K, my personal opinion is that you shouldn't come. Because unless you're really well off financially and can afford to pay that price. But I don't think that it's worth paying that much money to come to RPI. I don't think it's worth that much. But if you were to, say, get a really good scholarship or some funds from the school or anyone, like, you could always ask them for appeals and they would always just appeal and give you more money. If you just ask them that you have some some other circumstances and then they basically load my bill from like 70, 80K to around, let's say, 30K for me or 25K-ish uh, for one year. And I feel like that is like the general amount that I would, I personally would pay for it. And it's just like a ballpark estimate as if you ever get aid or you can always start just appeal definitely consider coming here because that is one of the biggest appeal to why I asked all my friends why they came to RPI because they got a good fucking package from them. They gave them a lot of money. So that's one of the biggest reasons why people come here. And all in all, it's not that bad of a deal if if it's not anything crazy, like above 50K. I want to get into one of the really good, important topics of the school, uh, which is dorming. You're forced to live there for the first semester, first year, I mean, and first two years. And you are just placed in either if you get lucky or you don't get lucky. I would recommend choosing, if you are able to choose, choose um, Warren Hall because that gives you, uh, you're still living with one other roommate, but you have a big ass wall separating you and the other guy or girl uh, or just anyone, never mind that, is anyone. And it gives you a lot of privacy along with you having an in-room bathroom. 
because one of the biggest things that I didn't like was about fresh the freshman dorms was that a lot of them had in-floor bathrooms so that you would have to go and go down the hall, leave the leave your room, go down the hall and share a communal bathroom with like 50 or 60 other people. And that did not seem appealing to me. But apparently I just got lucky. I chose Warren, did some research beforehand. Warren, I think uh, Davidson or and Barton, they all have in-room bathrooms or shared room. In-room bathrooms where you share between two or four people which isn't that bad at all. And although Warren doesn't have that much, doesn't have AC at all, you're still going to get heat. And it's not like it's going to be hot 24-7, like, doing 65 days a year. Because it's going to be hot for like the first few weeks of school, which is pretty bad. But, like, you got to deal with it. You got to roll with it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I would recommend. Choose Warren Hall. Additionally, uh, the dorms are basically not too big. You have this own personal space, but I know that the like Bray or Cary or let's say uh, West, no, not Hall Hall. They all those freshman five dorms. I would not pick them because I don't want no communal bathroom, and you have to share the room with another person without the big divide. It's smaller than like Warren or let's say Barton for per se, and you just have to do it but if you do get it it's not the end of the world it's honestly not too bad you just gotta it's part of the, the experience but you do you i guess i don't know that, that's just my take on it you don't gotta listen but that's just me and that just about wraps it up for the topics i have to cover about immensely the polytechnic institute if you have any other questions just feel free to like leave a comment or just dm me a private message or anything i don't know just reach out to me and I will try to my best to answer questions to any other prospective students or even current students right now. And signing out. Psych. Run. Psych. Run that back. So I want, I forgot to do one last topic. If you should overall should come to RPI. So what I think if you have a good package if there aren't really any other schools that, if you're considering like a community college or some other school, the like CUNY or some other school close by, or like if you really want to do CS, those that are, do, or any kind of technical or engineering background, you sure you want to do CS or engineering, you should definitely come. But make sure it's affordable one, and you really want to do engineering or it's computer science. Because otherwise, I would not recommend coming here unless you really know what to do and you really want to pursue a STEM field in either engineering or computer science, as well as paying around 20 to 30K or under the, underneath, if it's even lower, if it's like 2,000, 3,000, like why not? It's pretty good school, uh, pretty well known in the Northeast area. No one, no one fucking knows where this place is when if, if you talk about it in, in like Florida or like California, no one knows where the fuck RPI is. But in the Northeast, in New York City, people are going to know. And they the arts program is kind of ass. It's, it's just ass. I don't know. It's not kind of ass. It's just ass. But honestly, it kind of just forces you to find like career opportunities to find a job get off your computer and find a job, you know, just put in the work and you should be good. And that's just how you can kind of skip the arts program and not stay here over the summer. But the classes are easier here over the summer, so it's not really too big of a deal. Well, f officially signing out now. Peace out. Hope you find this video enjoyable and leave some comments down in the description, like below or something. I don't know. I'm new to this.